Dang. How much have you looked at uh, what, what PJ was doing in that role over the last month, and how much is, have you connected with him, and how much has he made sure to make himself available to you? No, nah, definitely. I pay attention to PJ a lot, uh, not only while he was here, but like even before he got here. Uh, uh, you know, just learning from him. He's a he's a great uh, great role model. Um, he helps me all the time during the games, especially now. Uh, now that I'm in the rotation, every time I come to the sideline, he's always giving me some type of tip or um, uh, uh, just like a strategy thing, something I could do better. Um, he's trying to help me out while I'm on the floor. So definitely grateful for him. Grateful to have him in my corner. Tanner says you were out there uh, working early. Obviously, you're sweating. It's like you were getting a good workout in. What were you uh, working on early, and kind of what have uh, they been telling you to work on early before you guys actually get together as a team? Uh, so today I was working on like uh, shooting, um, defensive stuff. I would say just reading, reading certain actions, so you can know when to cut, when not to cut. Just playing without the ball, uh, and then I just lift it. So that's pretty much it. But yeah. you didn't have the best shooting game the other night. Yeah. Um, is this still a just period of you playing regular rotation minutes, having to just take looks when you get them, knowing that you might not get better looks if you, if you pass those up? Uh, you say it's still a learning thing? It's a or? Pro- learning process and an adjustment for you, just playing those regular minutes with those guys and having to take more of those outside shots. Uh, yeah, it's definitely an adjustment. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't really be in any other position. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you just never know where you're going to get the ball, or where you're going to get the ball. So you just got to be ready at all times. Um, and just be ready to knock the shot down. They look, for, they want me to shoot, so I have to do just that. So. I think it, on the first Warriors game, uh, Ty said that he, felt, he felt like the game was a little sped up for you. Yeah. Um, what did that kind of two-game series teach you about just you know one of the better off-ball moving teams? Just just general. What did you learn from those two games? You just you can't you can't relax at all on defense. Um, Obviously, like Curry and Clay, they uh, they move constantly all the time throughout the game. But so does the rest of the team. Um, Curry and Clay, they both uh, they both move a lot more than the rest of the team. But the team is always moving, um, and they do that in order to keep getting them, you know, open shots or whatnot. Because if the defense is stagnant, or yeah, if the defense is stagnant, if they're stagnant, then Curry and Clay won't get as many looks because you know people are easy, it's easier to key into them. So just uh, just knowing that you can't take a take a break. You're always gonna be in motion somewhere, some way or the other. You still gotta help your teammates out at the same time. So it's just, it's a lot being thrown at you. So. I remember, uh, I believe it was summer league. We before summer league, you told us Draymond was one of the guys you kind of watched here. Yeah. Um, just as a cop, what was it like seeing him out there and how he was kind of running the show for them? Yeah. Uh, at that that forward spot. Uh, I was definitely. It was definitely a good thing to see. Um, you know, I watch him go, uh, coming up, and then you know, just watching him in person is a little different. Uh, he moves a lot faster in person than he is on TV. Um, but no, he's just, he's a good dude. Uh, he, he uh, the way he helps get his teammates open and he's he's knocking down the three ball right now. So uh, he actually came to me after the game, was talking to me a little bit, uh, just telling me to keep shooting, uh, keep shooting. Cause if you stop, it'll be hard to start again. So um, just to keep shooting, um, don't don't get down on your missing shots. Cause he did the same thing and you know, stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. Pretty cool to meet him, talk to him a little bit. So. And Kobe, when the shots aren't falling for you, are you trying to show the coaching staff that you can do other things to impact the game, rather that's defense, rebounding, getting back in transition, decommunicating, or trying to show the coaching staff that you do other stuff other than scoring? Uh, definitely. Uh, I feel like, in all honesty, my um, my biggest strength isn't even shooting. Uh, like, and I feel like they 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 know that as well. Um, it's everything else I do, like playing defense. Um, you know, being that glue guy, getting guys the ball, making the right decisions, um, and shooting is just a plus. Um, so they like they they're always on me about you know shooting open shots obviously but also just continue to do what I do and uh, affect winning and help the team as much as possible, and in the minutes that I get. Gotcha. And you feel like your game is evolved. Well, how how do you see your game is evolving just these nineteen games early in the season, your rookie season? Game is evolving. Uh, how how has your game evolved? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say my IQ group is growing more and more every day. The more I'm around these guys, gotcha. uh, I'm, I'm becoming a better player off the ball. Uh, obviously in college I had the ball most of the time. So just becoming a you know an effective player off the ball is is pretty much how, how I'm going the most. I remember. Terrence, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say Terrence um, kind of went through something he went through four years ago when you four year guy who came in was trying to find a foothold on a team that was trying to win right now and he, and he said the biggest thing that he knew from that experience was like there's not you don't have many opportunities to play through mistakes on you know, yeah. a team that's so committed to winning immediately. How do you not? Get, um, I guess, put off or worried about making mistakes, trying to play through them, even when you know that it could be a quick hook because you're, yeah. you're trying to win right now. Uh, I would just say, like, 
just, you know, just if you play to not make mistakes, you're going to make way more mistakes than you would if you played uh, like stress free, like with a uh, clear mind. So I just try to go out and play with a clear mind. Mistakes, if mistakes happen, you know, just continue to play through them. Um, I mean, I'm already, I'm just not like I'm playing 30 minutes a game anyway. So my minutes are limited as it is. So just trying to make the most of those minutes. Um, uh, just keep building that trust with uh, Coach Lou. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's talking to me all the time, you know, constantly. Whenever I make a mistake, he just tells me to get back, keep playing, uh, don't worry about it. So, you know, just having a coach like that in my corner, it's like, it's, it's kind of it's kind of hard to get down on yourself when he's when he's backing you up, uh, feeding you confidence all the time. So. I'm sure you have tons of people in your ear right now about feedback or that you can dream on. How much does your dad, your high school coach, sort of like, Tell you what he's seen. Does he, does he try to step back? Give you space, or is it like yeah, yeah, nah, he, watching the film? Yeah, he definitely, uh, he definitely gives me a lot of space nowadays. Um, back when I was with him, I didn't really get any space at all. But when I moved, when I went off to college, he would tell me stuff every now and then. And uh, but now he pretty much lets whoever is my coach at the time, you know, do their job. And you know, he just stays back. And you know, if he sees something, he'll always mention it to me. But it won't ever be like it used to be. So <laughs> thankful for that. <laughs> Cody, what's been it? What's been like playing with uh, another sort of center in, in Daniel Tice? Because a lot of your minutes have, have uh, come with him playing at the five, you playing at the four uh, for the most part. I know in college, like you play as the biggest guy a lot of the times. Like, what's what's it been like uh, running a report with him on the floor? Uh, it's definitely it's definitely been a help. Uh, he makes my life a lot more a e lot easier. Um, makes everyone's lives a lot easier. Uh, you know he's. He's great at pursuing the ball on the re on the rebound side of things. Uh, he can catch a lob. He can also step out and shoot the three, which many people don't know. But you know, he's and he's versatile. He can move his feet. So just playing a guy like that, uh, just constantly learning from him as well, um, trying to take bits and pieces from his game, and you know, just trying to make myself better. So he's he's, he's a great guy to have out there. I remember uh, at, at summer league when I asked you what the biggest adjustment from college to at least summer league has been. You said. The defensive adjustment of like where you, where you force guys into help. Yeah. Since summer league and now into the NBA regular season, what's has there been another big adjustment that you've seen that you've had to kind of adapt to at all? Uh, not since summer league. No, nah. we pretty much run the same defense. Uh, as summer league, uh, it might have been a few small things like if the ball gets in the or if the five gets the ball. In summer league, we would just take away everyone else and make the five score on his own. Versus now, you, you know, you have versatile bigs like Jokic and. And be whoever may, whoever it may be. So you kind of have to help as well. You can't just fan off and deny everyone else the ball. Uh, so just things like that, but nothing too serious. No, it's pretty much the same. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody.